driving down the road, this is your new setup. If you're looking to add Apple CarPlay or Android Auto wirelessly to your F-150 2015 to 2021, you're gonna want one of these. In this video, our goal is to help build your confidence so you can install this DIY at home, purchase it with the link, wait for it to show up, watch this video in the meantime, and know exactly how to install it. So we're gonna get into that process, but I have a tape measure next to me because I wanna show you how large the screen is. The corners of the screen part only 12 inches. It's a little bit smaller for the Android Apple CarPlay because you have some menu things here, but we're going to show you what that looks like once we get it installed and we have it powered up. But this is a really nice unit from iDoing. We will have that linked in the description if you want to order it from us. That is the best way to help support us who make content to help you build your confidence in the garage. In this box, it comes with all these adapters. And does this look really stressful? Kind of, maybe to some of you, but trust me, it is not. It's all plug and play. There's really only one place for everything to go. So with a little bit of patience, and after watching this video, you're gonna feel great and you can get this done yourself because you're gonna touch it, see it, feel it every single day when you drive your car and you wanna have Apple CarPlay because some of these years, these F-150s, as you know, the head unit is terrible, the software is terrible. We're gonna fix that with this and it's gonna be awesome and it's just one big giant bezel that'll pop in and we'll walk you through every step. Let's get straight to it and then start enjoying this thing. Hopping in the truck, we're gonna wanna remove the mesh above the speaker right here. So you're gonna take your plastic non-marring pry tool on one side. There's four clips. Let's start in this corner here. You're gonna hear that pop. That's totally normal. Okay, it's looking good. Now you can put a little pressure with your hand, but get in the corners with this tool because it's got all four corners. And then this comes out like that. You would normally get a seven millimeter ratchet like this, normal, but don't let this intimidate you. I have a power one to save me time because I am working on cars a lot more than most. So it pulls it out of there real quick for me. You just want to ratchet those seven millimeters out by hand. And then this whole piece should come up from the back. This one's not releasing. So then once you get it like this, you can lift it up from the back. Take your pry tool and there's clips right here. You're gonna come up like that, all the way across. Then we're gonna have a wire to unplug from the speaker. It's got a push clip. We can set this out of the way. So this is what you need to disconnect. Now we have two. Oh wow, someone took this apart already when they worked on my dad's truck and didn't put that back. So there's a, usually, usually there's two seven millimeters. There's only one on this truck. Pull this whole thing out. With a little bit of pressure. Then it will slide out, and now we have some wires on the back side of this. One by one, tab on the bottom side of these multi pin. So let's go ahead and pull these out. So for these ones, you've got this little tab inside right there, right here, push down on it, and it will release. Now we can have easier access. So this one, this weird one, you just gotta press on the bottom down here. And then this is free. Next thing we gotta do is get rid of this screen. Seven millimeters. I need some extensions. Should be three on each side. And then while I'm at it, I'm gonna get the CD player ones down below. Pull this screen out, then we can start disconnecting these wires with single push pins. So you push that tab down, and then you can release the gray lever and pull this out. And the blue ones have a tab as well.
that just need to be pushed in and pulled. And then our screen is free. We have our wires dangling. This is all good. Next up, we're gonna remove the CD player. Now this has like a rubber tab in the back so it doesn't come out as easy. So I'm gonna apply some pressure with my hand inside here. And then I can get to the back side to push these tabs in, pull each of these wires out. It's all just looking for that tab to push in and pull out every single one of them. I'm not even showing you super up close other than what the 360 camera is getting because it's not rocket science. Anyone that shows you too up close, I feel like it stresses you out more and next thing you know, it's like you don't want to do it. It's not hard. Anybody can do this type of install. From here, we just got to plug everything in. So let's grab our kit. I have everything with me here. Okay, so have a wiring harness, the main one, which is the big one. Don't be intimidated at all. Intimidated at all. So it's gonna go up in this top corner right here. But I wanna hook up all the other ones first. So let's set this aside. So now we're just gonna look for the different size plugs and find the obvious things. So there's one that goes in the one with the gray clip right there. So this other big one goes down here to the bottom clips in nice. I have one more big black one. Clips down to the AC controls-ish area also. So let's grab our wiring harness and look what's left. Then we have a little micro USB that plugs in also. That's its own adapter. That's ready to go. In the packaging you have these orange clips. One, two, three, four, five, the OEM head unit. I'm gonna pull these orange clips off one by one. Yo, what? Flew all the way up here, be careful. And then I'm just gonna move them over to each one of these tabs. That fits good. I'm gonna get this big towel I know I'm gonna shimmy around a lot. So I'm gonna put this here and set our brand new expensive head unit, not too expensive though. Right here, I'm gonna start plugging things in. Our two big plugs left over is gonna go into the new head unit. That's gonna clip in. Kinda have to dance with those wires a little bit. And this is gonna go top corner. Then we're gonna plug in our RCA for the camera. And we need to plug this pin in for that micro. These right here, these little white ones, you just look how many pins they have and you look in here and count. So I see four pins. So that's gonna go in here. Then your radio wire goes in here. Go ahead on your factory head unit. There's tabs on the back side of this one. You're gonna press on each side and push the buttons through the front is pinch the sides of them together and then push it through the front and it takes a little bit of force on one side and then once you figure it out the buttons will pop out if you got the traction the traction control on the left so all you got to do is just go in here pop these in then our auto start stop and our hazard lights and then they're functional on top of this head unit. I'm looking through my box of goodies, and the last thing in here that we're gonna want to use with this specific vehicle, which you have a wiring, you have a bunch of other wires. You've got a SIM card. If you wanted to have a dedicated SIM card for this like Android head unit style, so you could have cellular device to run things like YouTube and Netflix without using your phone's Wi-Fi, which you can. So not many people are gonna use a cellular SIM card. This connector right here is if you had a fully aftermarket audio system. This is for probably a different year of F-150 that I have that has this adapter for the camera. We have a four pin to USB, so if we wanted to add one, we could, which we don't need to. And then I have this GPS right here that I'm gonna put in the dash behind. That plugs in on one of these red nipples. It's the top one. You push it on and then you thread it on so it can get GPS signal when you're out in the boonies. So you can lengthen this, take off the sticky, 
and then you can stick it back here in the corner. It'll be, you can find a place to adhere it to behind the dash. To make sure that your steering wheel controls work and the volume knob works down here on this new head unit, we wanna make sure that we get some small things back here. So one thing I wanna make clear is that I have figured out that the yellow and blue no longer need that. We can tuck those back. Those two are good. As far as the antenna that goes to the black wire right here that has a little bit of tension, we have our micro USB. And so what's key is that in this main wiring harness, you will find this little small white guy in the main wiring harness. And you're gonna come up here and put the tab in a downward position and it's gonna pop in here. And that's where you're gonna get all your steering wheel controls and such. Then I found that this blue, there's a blue wire that has two ends. I'm gonna hook those together. That connection just pushes together. and It'll make a solid connection. There's some heat shrink there, but I'm not gonna worry about it. I have a purple cord that's sitting still I don't need for this truck. And anytime you see some of these little white plugs, it's gonna go to the white part of the new head unit. So let's do this together. We've got the GPS cable here. We have our antenna going to that black one. The blue and yellow that are similar, that are the single pin round, those do not get used. This big adapter that makes it work connected to the wiring harness, those have the connections below. We have our yellow RCA connected to each other for the camera. And then we're gonna plug everything else in where the connectors, where they all match up. We look for the white ends, the small ones, and they go right here in the head unit right there. We have our two lower black factory cables. And then from there, you're pretty much good to go. We're gonna keep these wires up here to plug into our traction control, hazard, auto start, stop, and all that. So I'm gonna push my towel under here. And I'm gonna start threading some of these cables in here making sure I have everything intact and kind of setting it in from the bottom. First, I'm gonna look down here where these tabs are gonna go. Before I push that in, I wanna make sure and connect my buttons up here, which is really tight. Um, that one pops in. And this one pops in. working so now the rest of the way make sure the cables are okay push this in starting at the bottom I'm looking for cables here in the way all is good push it in it should snap all the way in now I'm going to test my AC controls that works then I'm gonna test my volume knob here, that works. Then we can get this, test my media button. It's working great, perfect. We do have some things to do to get the reverse camera, but let's put this back together all the way. So remember we have the black screws. You should have two, I only have one, remember? And then this is gonna pop back in here. We need to connect this cable first on the back side for the speaker. That clips in. Then remember these clip on top first. Last thing is the cover for the speaker. We have the rounded side facing us. Now let me show you what you need to change on the screen so you don't panic. Now what you're looking at, AC controls here, you have all your apps in here. Remember this is an Android driven device so you have windows that you can swipe away to clear. So if it starts to bog down or starts to act weird, you need to open all windows and swipe or clear them all. And on the weird day, it's not responsive at all or it's just really slow. Pull down from the top of the screen, you'll see Wi-Fi brightness and all these things. Look for the dot that has the button that says restart. It'll boot it down, restart it, and it will act fresh. It'll clear the cache and the memory and everything, so it's super responsive. So know that that is there. You have the windows you need to swipe away. If you have too many apps open and it starts to bog down the computer inside of it, or you pull down from the top 
and you hit restart. Know that those are there. This is key with these Android devices. They're super, they work really well, but sometimes the RAM or the cache gets loaded up and it just needs to be cleared out and taken care of. So know those are there when you buy one of these. It'll save you a lot of grief and a lot of kind of questioning. Why isn't this working as good as it used to? I want it to work normal. One of these two options will fix it every single time. You have a volume here as well as your knob and your tune for your radio and media selection. But let's go, and you have your radio here. So let's go to settings. You can click Wi-Fi on, then you hit more, and then you can select your network. So we're gonna to toggle off for now, but if you wanted to use YouTube and stuff, you totally can while driving, which is rad for road trips. This is when, if you had a SIM card in here, you would just have data all the time. And so whatever apps you have, like YouTube, Chrome, Google Play Store, anything you wanna download, YouTube Music, anything, you just don't need your phone at all. You could just run it with this software only, but most of you are gonna do Apple CarPlay, so none of this applies, except for once we get Apple CarPlay going, then it doesn't, that's all you really care about, so bear with me. But that's there, and that's kind of cool for some people who maybe live in their car. Brightness mode auto, you can choose different themes. Let's go dark, sound, speed compensating, volume control, all these settings. So your back button is right here if you ever want to go back. Let's go to original car, show temperature, yep, 82 degrees outside. Steering wheel, it already was working from the get-go, so I didn't have to do anything, but if you needed to program something custom, like you wanted to change your volume up to your mute button or something of that nature, you have all these controls that you can do that. You hit start, press the button on your steering wheel, and then you do it here. So this is a way you can customize it. So we're gonna go back, but just know that that's there. So you wanna go to temp, norm, change that to Fahrenheit if you're like us in the US. Reverse, this is important. So you can attach like 360 cameras and stuff to things like this. But if you scroll down, reverse system selection, this truck, when you put it in reverse, there's a display. But keep in mind, when I'm in PAL, it's all wonky. So I was panicking when I first got into it, but I realized it's NTSC. So make sure you figure that out. I just did trial and error all of them until I got to that one and realized it was good. Reversing volume control, you can have it mute. So I'm just going to put it low. I know my dad won't want it all the way off time and date, went ahead and chose what was needed. So if you wanna connect your phone, you're gonna to need to go to Bluetooth, and then you're gonna connect your phone here. This is the device name, here's the pin. Then you're gonna go home once it's connected, and you're gonna swipe until you find T-Link 5. T-Link 5, and now it's wirelessly connected via Apple CarPlay to my iPhone right here. We have our AC controls here. We can also use the buttons down below, and it just works like any other Apple CarPlay now. So here's what your maps would look like. It's huge. This would be great for going on road trips. These are game changers for your day-to-day -day life. Now you have this huge screen here. Let's go over to my dad, see what he thinks. In the meantime, it's linked in the description. I'm excited for you to get one of these. Something I just learned about the reverse camera, if you hit settings, you can turn the brightness on and off. You can also get to the camera settings here we talked about a second ago. The rear park aid does have a visual now. Driving down the road, this is your new setup. If you wanted to have multiple apps, you can click this. Little Leonard Skinner, just have the nice button for mute. This also works. Dang, quite the upgrade. So. AC controls always stay here, and you can also use the physical buttons. Okay. Steering wheel controls all work. Um, you can hit off. Um, if you, you can hit auto in the middle, and it'll pull up this screen, and you can hit auto. Oh, it has. So I can set the temp now? Yes. Oh, nice. Right here? Yep. Oh, I like that. I haven't, I've not had that. I like that. I Old know. truck had that. Yeah, that's cool got it that close and it actually is pretty accurate if you're ready to install this in your 2015 to 2021 f-150 all the models of the f-150s it will work with this kit that's why there's multiple wires and different things in the kit that's all included we'll have it linked in the description you can purchase it we'll get it to you as fast as possible if you happen to have one of these toyota camrys in your family Check out this video right here. We do the same process and do a nice upgrade here. That was really satisfying.